Hello everybody, you are here because you're watching a video on the response to geographical issue or RGI skill. Okay, so basically a response to geographical issue, right? It's about uh, you learning about uh, an issue in geography and what is the response towards this geographical issue? How do you see these geographical issues? Do you know enough about the issues in order to make an argument uh, to argue for or against the pro and the cons of these particular issues. And in this situation or in this chapter, the geographical issue is how can uh, tropical rainforests or rather tropical forests, so tropical rainforests and mangrove forests be managed sustainably? You will need two sets of notes for this. So please go get them now. If you haven't gotten them, you can pause me. The first set of notes is the sustainable management of tropical rainforests. This one, all right, and it looks something like this. The other one is a completely new set of notes that was given to you. It is the Gaza, uh, sorry, uh, Gazi Bay in Kenya, all right. So a uh, RGI worksheet based on Kenya, and this one is due. The 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 the, the uh, Gazi Bay mangroves are due is due on the second of May Tuesday. So in this video, we will use these two notes. All right, so just to remind you again, this is not a Netflix video. When you are doing this, watching this video, you should be watching it on your PLD and you should have both your notes with you. You should be writing stuff down, highlighting stuff and doing the work. So we're going to start with this set of notes first, the sustainable management of tropical rainforest notes. Okay, so an overview uh, you have already done this, you've already accessed the Chinese URL and you have done uh, some of this in the Padlet and I have left some comments on them. In this uh, subtopic, we are only looking at two strategies to manage tropical forests. We are looking at rehabilitating disturbed areas. We are also looking at promoting public education. Okay, basically, how can we uh, replant or rehabilitate to restore some of the disturbed areas and how can we promote education, public education, uh, let more people know about the issue. So these two only, uh, let me just draw it out. So only these two are tested in an RGI question. The other two, it is optional, it is not tested. You can read about it to learn more about it, but you don't need to study, uh, we don't need to test you in the WA2. So the RGI answering technique is quite similar to what you did on Padlet. Okay, so in the Padlet, what you did is you read uh, your textbook, you read your textbook, and then after that, you wrote about one strategy. When you are facing the RGI question in your WA2, you do the same thing. You get some information to read, and using that information, you're going to write about two strategies. So how did you write about a strategy when you were answer answering your RGI question? You actually did this in a Padlet. So in your Padlet, you will assign one strategy. What you did was that you described the strategy. You told me what the strategy aims to do. And then after that, you use, you gave one example, right? And we use a country example to support what you described. Some of you even went to do some additional research, which is good job. Now, after that, using that country as an example, you described some areas where it worked well, mainly the strength. And then you gave some evidence about this. And then after that, you wrote about its limitation or some areas where it did not quite work so well. And you gave some evidence of this. Now, why do we need to talk about the strength and the weaknesses? We need to talk about strength and weaknesses because we always need to assess uh, an, uh, a strategy based on its pros and cons. Every strategy, every plan has got its areas where you work well, it also has this area that it did not work quite so well. Nothing is perfect in this world. And then why do we need to give an example? 
Now, if we don't give an example, then really what are we, why are we talking about something at all, right? So the example is to give your, what you say, uh, some credibility. So when you are writing about a strategy, when you're answering an RGI question, you should describe, give an example, talk about the strength, where it worked well, and talk about the limitations, where it did not work quite so well. So can you flip to page two of your sustainable management notes? What's going to happen is that we are going to complete uh, two of the strategies that you are required to know. All right, so the two of the strategies which you are required to know. We're going to start this now. Again, uh, you will be doing a lot of writing. So my suggestion is for you to listen first and then after that, at the end of each slide, you can pause. I will tell you when to pause and you can take the time to write. So you're going to complete this set of notes for the two strategies that you need to know. So the first strategy is to rehabilitate disturbed areas. Now, what's the meaning of rehabilitate? Now, rehabilitation is kind of like to restore you, right? To uh, you, were, you were okay and then after that, you went through some difficult times and then you're in a terrible shape now. And then when we rehabilitate you, right, we want to restore you back to your original wonderful condition, right? So that's the meaning of the word rehabilitate. So how can we rehabilitate disturbed areas in the tropical forests? What we can do is we can do reforestation, all right? We can plant new trees in those areas. Uh, what, what, what do people do? What they do is that they will choose tree species that can grow easily and quickly in these deforested areas. So they, they don't just like, dig a hole in the forest and throw the seed inside and then pray very hard and wait for uh, many, many years for the seed to sprout and grow into a tree. What they do first is that they grow a seed in the nursery. And then once this seedling is healthy enough or saplings are healthy enough, they transport these saplings into the deforested areas so that they can grow into trees. So that is reforestation. They plant new trees in areas which have been deforested. So you can pause and write this down. We can give you an example, or I can give you two examples. The first example is in Singapore, the mangrove rehabilitation project in 1999, before you were born. So where was this carried out? It was carried out in Pulau Semakau, and it was uh, done to replace a 0.14 kilometer square of deforested mangroves that occurred during the construction of a landfill. So if you are, uh, I think many of you may have visited the Pulau Semakau landfill and you know what it is. Uh, basically in Singapore, we don't bury our, uh, what we do to our trash is that we burn it first. And then after that, we take the ashes and we bury it in Pulau Semakau. So what happened was that when they built this uh, huge area to for landfill, they had to uh, deforest some mangroves, 0.14 kilometers square area of mangroves. And so what they did was that they rehabilitated this area and they planted new mangroves in these deforested areas. All right, the second example is in Brazil, where large uh, areas of forests that were deforested for mining were rehabilitated uh, by replantation of the seeds and the replacement of soil. Okay, the problem with mining is that it not only just removes the trees, it also removes the soils. All right, so when you remove the soil because you need to get uh, take away the top soil to get to either the, the, the oil or the coal, or sometimes there are even minerals and or precious metals in the soil. So what happens is that you remove all the soil, then you have a problem because not only your trees are gone, your soil is also gone. And you can't just plant the saplings back because the topsoil is usually the more fertile soil. And without this topsoil, you will not be able to grow healthy trees. So what you need to do is to replace the soil first and then plant the saplings onto the soil. So that was done in Brazil in the 1980s. So does it help? So yeah, sure, it works. Some strengths. It does help to reintroduce flora plants and fauna, animals, back into the deforested area gradually. And this you can actually see in Pulau Semakau. So if you visited Pulau Semakau, right, you can see that, oh, it is a beautiful island. Uh, there are some replanted uh, mangroves here in these areas, right? And if you visited Pulau Semakau, right, it is like almost like a resort feeling. There's no feeling of that these uh, mangroves or these 
uh, uh, forests have been deforested, cut down completely. You have no feeling that uh, these are the uh, uh, landfills. We have the landfills. The landfills are this part. So we still have some empty pots. All right. So it was a success in Singapore uh, because not only are the mangroves re uh, replanted, but you can also see that there are some beach and there are some coral which have been growing uh, around Pulau Samakau. And coral are very, very finicky. They don't grow in areas which don't have uh, clear waters, clean waters. All right. So with Singapore in Pulau Samakau, it was a success. But there are some limitations. And the very first limitations is the trees take a long time to grow. Right? It, might, it may take more than 10 years for newly planted saplings to grow into mature large trees. Right? So it will need 10 years. It will meet, need many, many years. And what are you going to do with all the problems of deforestation when these trees are taking their time to grow? All right. Not only that, if the soil quality is really poor because of your uh, because you have deforested the areas, then not all the saplings will survive. Many will die and you will require expert botanists to uh, come in and manage those areas. All right. Okay, so this is the example of Pulau Samakau. So this is some examples of uh, mangrove reforestation in Thailand. You can see actually it is doing quite well, right? The mangroves are growing all the way to the sea and they look fairly healthy. Uh, this you can watch and then think about the limitations. All right, so reforestation in Malaysia. Um, this is a video. I'm not going to show the video here. What you can do is that you can go and key in this tiny URL into your browser and watch this YouTube video. So this is the first strategy that you are required to know. Rehabilitation of deforested areas. The second strategy that you are required to know is public education. So what is public education? Public education is basically informing or educating the public, right, uh, about why it is important to uh, maintain your tropical forests, uh, understand that your tropical forests are under threat, and what they can do to save the tropical forests. So to raise awareness and to teach, to educate uh, the general public about the imp importance of uh, sustainability of your tropical forests. So in examples, some example is Singapore is always one example. So we have three examples here. So if you uh, are if you're a bit more aware of the National Parks Board or if you follow their website or their the IG account, right, you actually notice that they will have a lot of exhibitions, festivals, and workshops. In fact, I think our school actually does partner with uh, NPARC uh, with some of their, their ALP, with our ALP program, right, where people can take, students, people, general public, can take part to learn more about tropical forests through different activities and games. Your green ambassadors, if we have green ambassadors in class, right, that's an example of public education in school, all right? So another example in Singapore is when the Nature Society organizes guided tours and uh, guided walks to Pulau Ubin to learn more about plants and animal lives in Singapore's tropical forests. In fact, many places do that. So for example, if you have been to Sungai Bolo and if you have taken a guided walk by one of their volunteers or their, their tour guides to learn more about how mangroves are important to the overall ecosystem in Singapore, that is an example of public education. Now, if you have went to botanic gardens before in your primary school and again taken a guided walk by a volunteer or a, 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 a tour guide, that is another example of public education. I did one previously and it was really very educational. Now, in Rwanda, it also happens the local tour guides will help to educate tourists on the value of tropical forests and what people can do to conserve it. Okay, so this is an example of public education. Are there any strengths and limitations? Yes, the strengths, it works because when people are more informed, they are more likely to play a part in reducing deforestation. So for example, part of your home or part of your answer for your uh, compare, full scope, full scope question, right, was printed on half a page, right? Uh, because I was thinking, oh, I'm going to save some paper, although you're not many students, but if I print on two pages and I divide it into two, right, I can save half the amount of paper. And you know that paper is made from trees and trees obtained from uh, the tropical rainforests. 
So when people are more informed, more informed, hopefully they will make decisions that can help to reduce deforestation. Okay, so for example, if I know, uh, if I know that this particular uh, palm oil, palm oil, for example, palm oil, palm oil, how they grow palm oil in Malaysia and in, in Indonesia is that they will deforest large plot of land and then grow the palm oil, harvest the palm uh, fruits, the dates, and then after that, squeeze out the oil. So if people know that palm oil actually plays a huge part towards deforestation, maybe people will choose not to purchase palm oil or choose not to purchase palm oil oil byproducts or choose not to uh, purchase products that is uses palm oil. Okay, so that is one example of the strengths of public education. If people are more informed, we can make choices that play a part in reducing deforestation. But there is a problem. The problem is that it's very difficult to shift mindsets away towards sustainability. I give you a very simple example. You know that big hullabaloo about charging five cents for a plastic bag in NTUC. So if you go and search um, um charging plastic bag, uh, five cents for plastic bag in NTUC. Oh, and you read the comments about it. Oh my goodness, people are so outraged and angry that they're going to be charged five cents or ten cents uh, for one plastic bag. But why are we so fussy about that? Just bring your own bag along, right? Um, not only that, other countries have been doing this way longer than Singapore. When I visited Ta uh, Hong Kong maybe uh, six years ago, they were already charging Singapore 50 cents for one bag. All right, so why are we so hung up about plastic bags? Just bring our own bags. Um, for me, I haven't been taking plastic bags from NTUC when I do my grocery shopping, and I have not done that for the past five years. I usually bring my own bag or bring my own auntie trolley. Uh, and I can safely tell you that I still have enough plastic bags to. Uh, throw away my rubbish every single day. Uh, sometimes when I do run out of it, I use newspapers to make a bag and, and we throw our rubbish into that. All right, so actually, you don't need to use that plastic bag. But people love that plastic bag. Singaporeans love our plastic bags. And it's very difficult to shift mindsets away um, from the status quo, from the existing situation, so that people can make sustainable choices. Another example I give you, okay? Another example is, do you know that if you go to Starbucks and you bring your own cup, right, you bring your own cup, actually you can save 50 cents all right, off your drink. Starbucks will give you 50 cents off your drink. But you just go and stand at the queue one afternoon and you stand there for 10 minutes and look at the number of disposable cups or takeaway paper cups that is given out. So few people bring their cups along. Why? You get 50 cents off. 50 cents off is like, I don't know, nearly um, what, 6% uh, or 7% of, of your drinks. If you, brought, if you brought your own cup along for 10 times, you could, I could buy it, you could get a free drink, I think. So it is very difficult to change people's mindset. Right? So that is the strengths and limitation of public education. You can pause and write now. So what have we covered so far in our term one and term two? Right, in the very first few weeks, we talked about space, place, and scale. And then after that, we delved into tropical rainforests. We talked about uh, where, what they are and where can they be found. And then we talked about mangroves and where, what they are and again, where can they be found. And finally, we talked about how these two are that to the environment, their leaves, their roots, uh, Mainly the leaves and their roots, right? Yeah. And then after that, we talked about management of tropical rainforests, which is what we were doing over the past two weeks. We talked about the uses of people uh, in the environment, how they are beneficial to our natural environment. Then we talk about how they are beneficial to people. And then we talk about the problems, right? The problems or the consequences when we extract too much resources from tropical forests. And then and finally, we spoke about strategies so that we can help to manage these tropical forests sustainably. Sustainably means what? So that many, many generations in future can enjoy these tropical forests. So the skills that we have covered so far, we have described climograph, described map space, we have done some sketching, identified, described, explained, we did compare, and then now we are going to do this with you. 
evaluate, describe example strength and limitation. Now, at this point in time, I am done with the previous worksheet. I will want you to take out your RGI worksheet on Gazi Bay in Kenya. So pause me and go get this if you haven't gotten this. Why are we doing this? So firstly, your RGI question, this worksheet is included in WA2. It is, your WA2 is going to be really similar to this worksheet. A set of course is not going to be on Kenya's Gazi Bay. It will be some another example. And uh, same thing, information will be given to you and you will be required to answer some questions based on this information that is provided. And this video, I, is, there is a focus on section B and section C response to the issue. So I'm going to show you how you can answer a RGI question. So can you flip over to question B? Section B, sorry. Section B, response to this issue. Okay, so I'm going to read out the question to you. We're looking at question one. With reference to this case study, to what extent are the strategies used to manage Gazi Bay effective? Now you can see the little highlights, those are the important words. To what extent are the strategies effective? What is the meaning of this to what extent? Right, what does do what to what extent mean? Okay, step number one, understand what the question is asking of you. So number one, to what extent means what? To what extent asks you to provide an argument based on the information that's given and some of your knowledge of both sides, your pro and a con. All right, so to what extent provide an argument based on this information and your knowledge of both sides, pro and con. What is the issue? The issue here is, is the strategy used in Gazi Bay? Sorry, are the strategies, pro, huh? are the strategies used in Gazi Bay effective? Tell me about the strategies. Give me some examples. Talk about their strengths and their weaknesses. You have to talk about both sides, the pro and the con, the yes and the no, the strength and the weakness. Otherwise, your discussion is very lopsided. It's very unbalanced, very unfair. Right? You only focus on the good and not the bad. Or you only focus on the bad and not the good. As a geographer, you want to have all kinds of information, the good and the bad, so that we can make a proper decision or proper conclusion. Okay, so that's step number one. Read the question, understand what it wants you to do. Use the information given in your worksheet or in your WA2 to do this. So, what kind of answer is considered to be a good answer, right? Because if it's a four mark question, is it I must find four points? All right, a response to geographical issue question, RGI question, is not based on points marking. It's based on what we call levels marking, L E V E L S, levels marking. And there are four levels that you could be on. You could be on level one. You could be on level two. You could also be on level three or level four. Level one, two, three, or four. And level one is the lowest level. Level four is what you want to be. Level four is where you want to be at. It's the highest level. All right? So you can read level one, two, and three at your own time. I'm not going to focus too much on it because obviously you don't want to be at level one, two, or three. You want to aim for level four. All right. So for level four, what are you required to do? Level four, you will get four marks. You are required to describe one strength and one limitation, but it's of two strategies. So two strategies, you are required to have two strategies. You talked about two strategies. And for each of these two strategies, you describe one strength and one limitation. Now, you cannot write very simply. You should provide enough details, examples from the information that's given to you as to why this is a strength or why it's a limitation. So some examples uh, you should use. So when I talk about details, right, you should be using examples from Gazi Bay, all right? Don't just ge talk very generically. Talk about examples from Gazi Bay, all right? So can you remember what you did 
previously. For each strategy, right, you did it once in a, a Padlet, and then after that, you actually copied the, the, this down, right, into your notes. Except, so uh, for each strategy, right, we did this for our notes also, right? We described the strategy, we gave an example, we talked about the strength, and we talked about the limitation. All right? So you can, based on your own knowledge, talk about the strategy. And then after that, for the rest of this, you can use actually Gazi Bay. Or you can use the information given in Gazi Bay. If you feel that there's not enough information given in Gazi Bay, you can use some of your own information or some of your own knowledge. But actually, most of the things will be given in Gazi Bay. All right? So is it going to be very difficult? Actually, no. La, the information is kind of given to you. You just need to uh, read it and put it in your own words a little bit, right? So have hope. So next thing that we're going to do is this. Now that I roughly know what I need to do, what do I do next, right? So now that I know my four levels, I know I need to have two strategies and for the both of the strategies, I must describe example, strength and limitation. So what do I do next? I need to read this information very, very well. I need to read this information very carefully because most of what I'm writing is going to come from here. Then from here, I need to identify the two strategies. What are the two strategies? Actually, you only learn two, right? You only learn rehabilitation and public education. So these are the two strategies. Then for each of the strategies, you are going to highlight the important information in the, the, the write-up about Gazi Bay. And you're going to do that for both of the strategy. And you're going to do that relating to the description of the strategy, the examples of the strategy, what, is the, what are the strengths, and what are the limitations. All right? So you're going to read and highlight. So you can pause me now and do this. Are you done? If you are done, you can continue. Step number three, what do we do next? Now that we highlighted all our description, our example, our strength, and our limitation for both, Rehabilitation and public education. We go on to step number three. Step number three, what we are going to do is we are going to start writing. We're going to start writing the formal essay using information and yes, your own knowledge if you want to add in one or two sentences. That's fine. Now, I have to give you this warning. At this point in time, it is so tempting to just copy every single thing. You can't because you don't have enough time. All right, you should give yourself 10 minutes to do this question. Don't copy everything. Summarize some of the key points and use some of your own words. All right? So don't copy everything. Summarize it and use some of your own words. And how should you write it? One huge, long, unreadable paragraph? No. One strategy, one paragraph. For paragraph one, you can write about reforestation. Describe example, strength, limitation. And then for a para two, write about public education. Describe example, strength, and limitation. Okay? So, after, so that is what you can do right now. You can pause me and start writing. Now, if you want to know about, or you want to recall this um, rubrics, all right, of the four different levels, it is also in your worksheet. It's just at the bottom of the line pages. Okay, so two paragraph, right? Two paragraph. Para one, deforestation. Para two, public education. You can pause me now. I hope you're done. And if you're done, we can continue on to the next section. All right, in the next section, after learning about these challenges, right? Uh, what is one action that you can take as an individual? All right as a person, as a student, to address this issue. So no more your country or not, you're not, a, uh, you're, not, you're not an organization, but you as a person, what can you do to address this issue? Actually, just ask, asking you, la, what actions can you take to help the mangroves? Or not man in this case, yes, mangroves. What actions can you help to ma take to help the mangroves? And if it's a tropical rainforest question, what action can you help to take to help the tropical rainforest? All right? 
So again, this is a level of response marking. Uh, your answer, of course, you're aiming for two marks. Oops. You're aiming for two marks. And your answer will describe what your action is. And this action that you take, right, is very relevant to the issue. There is a strong link between how your action can help to reduce the deforestation of mangroves. What can you do? All right, your action, huh? not just yeah, your action. Uh, action with your hands and with your mouth. Not action just by thinking about it, okay? Thinking about it is not an action. Thinking in your heart also not an action. Loving the mangrove with your heart is also not an action. It must be an action. I must be able to see something. Your hands must do something. Your mouth must say something. That kind of action, okay? So uh, what kind of action you can take to help the mangroves? Now, you can think about it, but if you are really clueless and you really don't know what to do, you can go and look at uh, this website. Okay, you can read out on these two websites. I have saved it in a URL, a tiny URL, so it's easier for you to type. There are some examples which you can take. Maybe you can volunteer to educate and learn more about the mangroves and volunteer to educate Singaporeans at the Sungai Below Wetland Reserve, right? Or uh, to teach them more about the importance of mangroves in the ecosystem, etc. Um, you can do something like, I don't know, make sure that you educate people about uh, uh, making uh, sustainable options when they choose uh, to buy food, all right, that they are not harvested uh, from areas which deforest mangrove because they want to plant uh, some, uh, they want to have prawn farming in the area. So if you have really no idea, here are two good websites. You can read up on these websites. Okay? So you can pause me now and do this question too. All right, any of you have done this question? All the best. All right, go forth and conquer. All right, just want to remind you, RGI is due on 2nd of March. You need to submit it to me on Tuesday. I will chong it out and I will finish marking it and I will give it back to you. All right, and we will go through it before your WA2. In fact, if you submit it to me, I will personally PM you the answers to the WG, uh, to the RGI so that you can take a look at it, even if you don't have your worksheet with you. All the best.